Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us today as we honor our Air Force Reserve Command's Airman of the Year for 2020. We are grateful for your time as we share this award ceremony with all of you. I am Chief Master Sergeant Megan Parrott, and I will be your MC for today's celebration. It has been a long road to this moment, but we refuse to let COVID keep us from recognizing the outstanding accomplishments of our citizen airmen. We are pleased to share this afternoon with you, and it's my pleasure to welcome our hosts and leadership team extraordinaire, the Commander, Air Force Reserve Command, Lieutenant General Richard Scobie, and his wife Janice, and the Command Chief, Air Force Reserve Command, Command Chief Master Sergeant Timothy White Jr. and his wife Edith. To our honorees and their guests, our commanders, chiefs, first sergeants and unit members and citizen airmen throughout the command, thank you so much for joining us. Today marks a time honored tradition recognizing the outstanding accomplishments and those members in our ranks who have gone above and beyond. While we traditionally prefer to recognize and celebrate these significant accomplishments in person, like we've done so often this year, we've had to adapt and overcome. As we celebrate these deserving airmen who embody our core values, we understand the importance of adapting to our new environment and delivering an event suitable for this distinguished audience. This brings us to an important point. While we are grateful to have the ability to leverage technology to celebrate and honor these great Americans, we may run into some technical difficulties or opportunities to show our flexibility and patience. So please, if you experience a technical glitch, do not despair. Just rejoin the celebration as soon as you're able. And as a reminder, this event is being broadcast live on Facebook and will be available to be viewed later. This is a proud moment for our honorees. It is also a proud moment for our Air Force Reserve Command. Throughout their many achievements, these airmen have set new standards for themselves, fellow airmen, and for the command. Each honoree will tell you that success is not an individual achievement, but the product of dedicated teammates working together towards a common goal. These airmen recognized here today personify the very essence of what we strive for. They are brave airmen, model citizens, and they serve our nation with honor and distinction. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. I know you're eager to hear from General Scobie and Chief White, but first, I will ask all of our nominees to please turn on your cameras. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce our fearless leader, the commander, Air Force Reserve Command, Lieutenant General Scobie, who is joined by his wife, Mrs. Janice Scobie. What a, uh, what a great introduction. Uh, thanks very much, Megan, I appreciate it. You know, it's, uh, this has been a strange uh, journey, that's for sure. Uh, COVID has definitely put a crimp in our style when it comes to getting uh, folks together and staying connected. Uh, but I wanna thank everybody, especially for the team that put this together for getting all of us um, linked in so that we can uh, celebrate this incredible uh, achievement for our airmen. You know, we, we, the Command Chief and I had an opportunity to talk with all of our airmen and their leadership ahead of time. And one of the things that is uh, crystal clear to both the Command Chief and myself is, is uh, we are doing a great job in the Air Force Reserve Command. We're doing a great job of, of grooming leaders of substance that are gonna be able to take our organization where it needs to go in the future, which has uh, been very uh, stressed over the last two years. And what it's really uh, showed us is that our airmen are incredibly resilient and capable of doing amazing things if we give them the tools in order to be able to do that. So we are so fortunate uh, to be the command team of an organization that is uh, as accomplished as this. So from the leadership perspective, I was really impressed. And all the leaders talked about how great their airmen are and uh, what they're able to accomplish. They talked about some of the resources that they may need coming uh, down in the future. And then we talked with the award winners without their leadership around. They talked about how great their leadership was in helping to ensure that they were taken care of and they had the opportunity to, to serve to their full potential. 
uh, there's nothing more than we can ask out of our formation. That's what's, in, that's what's important about the things we do, is making sure that uh, the command chief and I, as the command team, along with both our spouses, Janice and Edith, that, that we give the resources that our organization needs. The only reason our headquarters exist, uh, both here at the Pentagon and then down south at Air Force Reserve Command, is to ensure that you are all successful. And, uh, and we thank you every day for the things that you contribute. So on behalf of Janice and myself, uh, congratulations, and I'll turn it over to the command chief. Hey team, I was, uh, as a boss was talking, I was scanning across the, the video here, and I can tell you, uh, I am really proud. I am extremely proud. Edith and I are extremely proud of all the, the amazing things you've done uh, throughout this past year and the things that you're going to continue to do uh, for us in the future. Uh, it, you guys are incredible, and I can tell you, uh, we, we pushed this thing off as, as long as we, as we could, but I'm hoping that we can do this in person, but this is definitely the next best thing. Super excited, uh, looking forward to hearing a little bit about uh, more about your accomplishments, and we look forward to uh, serving with you in 2021. Boss? Thanks, Tim. I appreciate your comments. Uh, thanks to all of our award winners. And Megan, turn it back over to you, and let's get this ceremony on the road. Thank you, General and Mrs. Scobie, Chief and Mrs. White. We appreciate you. As we prepare to honor these outstanding airmen, we would now ask our honorees to please turn off your cameras at this time. Our command team will leave their cameras on. While they're doing that, we'd like to describe to the audience the mementos our nominees have received to commemorate their accomplishments. Each nominee is wearing their Airman of the Year polo. They also received a package including telework support items, an Airman survival kit to support continued resiliency, and the coveted Airman of the Year nominee trophy. Nominees, as I call your name, please turn your camera on again. Once your citation has been read, we will ask you to smile for a quick photo before turning your camera back off. As a reminder to, our, uh, to the folks viewing, these airmen won in their respective numbered Air Forces prior to competing at the Air Force Reserve Command level. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet our Air Force Reserve Command Airmen of the, nominee, Airmen of the Year nominees for 2020. In the Airmen category, we would like to recognize the following nominees. From 10th Air Force, Staff Sergeant Haley Sewell. Staff Sergeant Sewell is a medical readiness journeyman from the 419th Medical Squadron, Hill Air Force Base, Utah. Then, Senior Airman Sewell backfilled a critical maintenance group commander support staff position and stepped up to serve as the unit deployment manager, successfully deploying 45 wing members in support of Operations Inherent Resolve and Freedom Sentinel. Senior Airman Sewell was selected for promotion to Staff Sergeant and hails from South Ogden, Utah. She is assigned to the 419th Medical Squadron, Hill Air Force Base, Utah, where she serves as the NCOIC of Medical Readiness. Ladies and gentlemen, Staff Sergeant Haley Sewell. Leaders, Yay. please smile for the camera in three, two, one. Smile. Thank you. Click. <laughs> Representing 22nd Air Force, Senior Airman Allison Copeland. Senior Airman Copeland is an aerospace maintenance journeyman from the 934th Airlift Wing, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Senior Airman Copeland's dedication resulted in the expeditious completion of her AFSC core training, enabling her to serve as a dedicated crew chief during a manning shortfall at home station. This experience enabled her to step up for a short notice deployment where she continued to excel, completing both her professional military education and an unprecedented 194 maintenance actions. Senior, Air Senior Airman Copeland hails from Ramsey, Minnesota, and is currently serving as an Air Reserve Technician assigned to the 934th Aircraft Maintenance Squadron in Minneapolis. Ladies and gentlemen, Senior Airman Allison Copeland. Hey, Leaders, Allison. please smile for the camera in three, two, one. Smile. Thank you. Click the 
from the Air Force Personnel Center, Staff Sergeant Joanne Scafidis. Staff Sergeant Joanne Scafidis is a personnelist assigned to Headquarters Air Reserve Personnel Center, Buckley Air Force Base, Colorado. Recognized as a subject matter expert, then Senior Airman Scafidis was handpicked to represent ARPC in the AFI 362406 write up in which she clarified air reserve component requirements within the total force instruction. Focused on efficiencies and innovation, she streamlined the evaluation reports appeal board program process and automated the program, eliminating a 120 day mailing delay and saving the Air Force $60,000. Hailing from Miami Springs, Florida, Senior Airman Scafidis was selected for promotion to Staff Sergeant and continues to serve at Headquarters Air Reserve Personnel Center, Buckley Air Force Base, Colorado, as the NCOIC of the Evaluation Reports Appeal Board. Ladies and gentlemen, Staff Sergeant Joanne Scafidis. Leaders, please smile for the camera in three, two, one. Smile. Thank you. And the winner in the airman category, an air transportation journeyman from 4th Air Force assigned to the 35th Aerial Port Squadron, Joint Base McGuire Dix Lakehurst, New Jersey, Staff Sergeant Kristen Springer Ince. Then Senior Airman Kristen Springer Ince was a critical oh. member in support of Joint Task Force Southwest Asia at Al Jabbar, Kuwait, where she trained 33 U.S. Army Rangers on cargo loading, moving 49 short tons of howitzer support cargo and 11,000 pounds of explosives for Kuwaiti border security operations. She coordinated recovery efforts of abandoned aerial port equipment, saving $370,000 in Air Force assets while increasing inventory by 49%. Additionally, Senior Airman Springer Ince volunteered to fill a critical shortfall for the 389th Expeditionary Medical Group, utilizing her medical nurse license to administer over 620 immunizations to service members. Finally, Senior Airman Springer Ince supported the growth of over 200 future leaders in the Civil Air Patrol by organizing a uniform drive event collecting 266 uniform items valued at $21,000. Recently promoted to Staff Sergeant, Sergeant Springer Ince hails from Granger, Indiana and continues to serve in the 35th Aerial Port Squadron, Joint Base McGuire Dix Lakehurst, New Jersey. Ladies and gentlemen, Staff Sergeant Kristen Springer Ince. All right. Yeah! Leaders, please smile for the camera in three, two, one. Smile. Thank you. In the non-commissioned officer category, the following NCOs were identified as the best in their numbered Air Force. Representing 10th Air Force, Master Sergeant Timothy Overgau. Master Sergeant Timothy Overgau is a client systems technician serving in the 477th Fort Support Squadron at Joint Base Elmendorf Richardson, Alaska. Then Tech Sergeant Overgau was critical in ensuring immediate multi-agency communication capabilities within the NORTHCOM AOR and led the execution of cyber support at Marine Corps Air Station Miramar for exercise winter fury. Technical Sergeant Overgau constructed IT hardware valued at $4,000 and implemented a virtual training lab for total force cyber teams. Ensuring zero gaps in training while members telework during COVID-19 constraints. Technical Sergeant Overgau hails from Modesto, California and is still serving at Joint Base Elmendorf Richardson, Alaska. Ladies and gentlemen, Master Sergeant Timothy Overgau. Leaders, please smile for the camera in three, two, one. Smile. Thank you. From 22nd Air Force, Master Sergeant Christina Rapola. 
Master Sergeant Christina Rapola is a military training instructor assigned to the 433rd Training Squadron at Joint Base San Antonio, Texas. Then Technical Sergeant Rapola served on the Military Training Instructor Supervisory Team dedicated to developing 35 instructors charged with training over 3,800 trainees. Her leadership is critical in shaping the minds and hearts of those who will serve as our next generation of citizen airmen. Tech Sergeant Rapolo was selected for promotion to Master Sergeant and hails from Agana Heights, Guam and continues to serve as a military training instructor. Ladies and gentlemen, Master Sergeant Christina Rapola. Leaders, please smile for the camera in three, two, one, smile. Thank you. Representing Air Reserve Personnel Center, Technical Sergeant Ilea Duncan. Technical Sergeant Ilea Duncan was the NCOIC of the eight member line officer accessions team that processed 744 incidents, assessing 319 members into the Air Force Reserve, earning the team of quarter. Focused on resilience and diversity, Technical Sergeant Duncan used her platform as the Rising Six President to organize professional development and financial resiliency courses serving citizen airmen throughout the center and pilot, piloted the Buckley Air Force Base inaugural Diversity March serving over 300 participants. Technical Sergeant Duncan hails from Aurora, Colorado and is serving as the manager pre-trained pre individual manpower mobilization at Air Reserve Personnel Center, Buckley Air Force Base, Colorado. Ladies and gentlemen, Technical Sergeant Ilea Duncan. Leaders, please smile for the camera in three, two, one, smile. Thank you. Representing Headquarters Air Force Reserve Command, Technical Sergeant Daniel Urban. Technical Sergeant Daniel Urban is an Enterprise Cyber Transport Technician assigned to Headquarters Air Force Reserve Command, Robbins Air Force Base, Georgia. With security and safety as his priority, Technical Sergeant Urban enabled first responders to receive real-time precise caller information, enabling life-saving efforts to 2,000 personnel throughout 11 buildings with advanced 911 tracking system he helped develop and configure. He implemented security controls for 55,000 MAGCOM assets which reduced the cyber threat surface by 50% and obtained an advanced Cisco certification, saving the unit over $260,000 in vendor training fees. Technical Sergeant Urban hails from Camp Hill, Pennsylvania, and continues to serve at Headquarters Air Force Reserve Command, Robbins Air Force Base, Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, Technical Sergeant Daniel Urban. Leaders, please smile for the camera in three. Two, one, smile. Thank you. And the winner in the non-commissioned officer category, an in-flight refueling craftsman from 4th Air Force assigned to the 78th Air Refueling Squadron, Joint Base McGuire Dix Lakehurst, New Jersey, and one of our 12 Outstanding Airmen of the Year for 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, Technical Sergeant Nicole Gansert. Right, Nicole. Technical Sergeant Gansert was a critical member of the team who enabled coalition forces to strike ISIS targets during Operation Inherent Resolve, where three KC-10A extender tankers provided pre and post strike refueling for 11 F-15 and F-35 fighter aircraft. She flew 25 combat missions, totaling more than 200 hours and offloaded 2.5 million pounds of critical fuel in support of the operation. She definitely managed an in-flight emergency involving a GR4 Eurofighter, resulting in the preservation of $127 million in assets, averting a strategic loss. Additionally, Sergeant Gansert managed the total force integration mobility exercise deployment and scrubbed 72 records smoothing the rotational prerequisites. Finally, Technical Sergeant Gansert enabled two active duty Air Force evaluations, 
backfilled four total force integration missions while in pre-deployment preparation, alleviating 30% of the boom operator shortfall. Technical Sergeant Gansard hails from Voorhees, New Jersey, and continues to serve in the 78th Air Refueling Squadron. Ladies and gentlemen, Technical Sergeant Nicole Gansard. <laughs> Leaders, please smile for the camera in three, two, one, smile. Thank you. In the senior non-commissioned officer category, the following leaders have set the example for others to emulate. Representing 4th Air Force, but unable to participate in today's ceremony, Master Sergeant Timothy Strader. Master Sergeant Timothy Strader is an explosive ordnance disposal technician assigned to the 434th Civil Engineering Squadron Grissom Air Reserve Base, Indiana. Master Sergeant Strader oversaw the safe disposal of 56 unexploded ordnance hazards that restored airfield operation, 41 million square feet of security forces patrolled area, and provided for the safety of 4,200 coalition personnel on Ali Asalim Air Base, Kuwait. He also designed and executed Air Force Central Command's first hangar implosion on an active runway, enabling 25,000 sorties in support of Operation Inherent Resolve. He went on to conduct bilateral negotiations with Kuwaiti Air Force leadership to reopen an on-site large-scale explosive disposal range, ending a 10-year closure. Master Sergeant Strader hails from Louisville, Kentucky, and continues to serve at Hill Air Force Base, Utah. Ladies and gentlemen, we congratulate Master Sergeant Timothy Strader. Representing 10th Air Force, Master Sergeant Jesse Ross. Master Sergeant Jesse Ross is an air transportation craftsman assigned to the 70th Aerial Port Squadron, Homestead Air Reserve Base, Florida. Master Sergeant Ross expertly ensured 324 aircraft airlift missions successfully supplied 17,000 tons of cargo and 3,000 troops in support of the war effort with 117 of those missions conducted under the cover of darkness with aircraft engines running and load team members utilizing night vision devices. He also helped coordinate the swift airlift transfer of 53 captured ISIS fighters. Master Sergeant Ross hails from Rockledge, Florida, and continues to serve at Homestead Air Reserve Base. Ladies and gentlemen, Master Sergeant Jesse Ross. Leaders, please smile for the camera in three, two, one. Smile. Thank you. From Air Reserve Personnel Center, Senior Master Sergeant Derek Mayava. Senior Master Sergeant Derek Mayava is an Education and Training Superintendent. While at ARPC as the Division Chief, Classification and Training, Senior Master Sergeant Mayava was responsible for all aspects of training for over 9,400 personnel and supported 16 program managers and seven detachments on classification matters. He also developed his directorate's reorganization strategy to align overlapping missions in four branches to maximize efficiency and enhance service to over 70,000 customers. His success was noticed when the Air Force career field manager selected him to mentor the Interim Space Command's functional manager and develop training programs in preparation for the transition to the United States Space Force. Senior Master Sergeant Mayava hails from Pongo Pongo American Samoa and is currently serving at Air Education and Training Command as the Education and Training MAGCOM Functional Manager. Ladies and gentlemen, Senior Master Sergeant Derek Mayava. Leaders, please smile for the camera in three, two, one. Smile. Thank you. From headquarters, Air Force Reserve Command, but unable to participate in today's event, Master Sergeant Philip Baham III. Master Sergeant Baham III was the Air Force Reserve Command's Civil Engineer Training Functional Area Manager. Master Sergeant Baham created the Home Station Training Program available for use throughout the total force. His ingenuity enables up-to-date training metrics while standardizing training throughout the career field. 
Master Sergeant Baham hails from Bush, Louisiana, and is currently on terminal leave while continuing to serve as a high school Air Force Junior ROTC instruction instructor. Ladies and gentlemen, we congratulate Master Sergeant Philip Baham III. And the winner in the senior non-commissioned officer category, a material management craftsman from 22nd Air Force assigned to the 94th Logistics Readiness Squadron Dobbins Air Reserve Base, Georgia, Master Sergeant Sandra Crenshaw. Oh, Master Sergeant Crenshaw was deployed in support of Operation Inherent Resolve, where she led 24 total force integrated airmen and was responsible for the largest supply operation in Kuwait. This supply operation consisted of 141,000 aircraft assets valued at $80 million and was one of two expeditionary theater distribution centers in the area of responsibility, providing life-saving equipment to the U.S. Air Force and Army personnel deploying to Iraq, Jordan, and Syria. She resurrected the Iraqi logistics pipeline by establishing a high-priority mission support kit for the MQ-9 Reaper, an unmanned aerial vehicle, and oversaw absent A-4 requirements forward deploying two members to Al-Assad Air Base Iraq to complete the inventory and transfer of 10,000 MQ-1 Predator assets to Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan. Additionally, she was activated to Beja Air Base, Portugal, where she guided the logistics support team during, real, during exercise Real Thaw and aided the aircraft maintenance 0% total non-mission capable supply rate, crushing the Air Force Reserve Command standard of less than 10%. Master Sergeant Crenshaw hails from Atlanta, Georgia, and continues to serve as the 94th Logistics Readiness Squadron's NCOIC Material Management at Dobbins Air Reserve Base, Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, Master Sergeant Sandra Crenshaw. Yeah! <laughs> Leaders, please smile for the camera in three, two, one. Smile. Thank you. Next, our first sergeant category recognizing, recognizes the following leaders who continue to serve not only their squadron, but also the larger community. From 10th Air Force, Chief Master Sergeant Christina Bicknell. Chief Master Sergeant Christina Bicknell was the deployed first sergeant for the Red Horse Squadron First Expeditionary Civil Engineer Group that operated in nine geographically separated locations across the AOR. Filling a late notice shortfall, then Senior Master Sergeant Bicknell developed an undershirt training program to support and stabilize the geographically separated units and oversaw the execution of the resiliency tactical pause, instilling the impact of suicide awareness. Senior Master Sergeant Bicknell was recognized for her leadership and selected for promotion to Chief Master Sergeant. She hails from Fort Walton Beach, Florida, and now serves as the 919th Mission Support Group Sur Superintendent at Duke Field, Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Master Sergeant Christina Bicknell. Leaders, please smile for the camera in three, two, one, smile. Thank you. From 22nd Air Force, Senior Master Sergeant Teresa Lipchesky. Then Master Sergeant Teresa Lipchesky served more than 300 citizen airmen at over nine geographically separated units as the 413th Flight Test Group's first sergeant. Master Sergeant Lipchesky focused her energies and efforts on building resilient leaders and families by slashing suicidal response time, reinvigorating the key spouse program at her GSUs, and serving as a senior NCO leadership and development course facilitator during her tenure as a first sergeant. Master Sergeant Lipchesky was selected for promotion to senior master sergeant and hails from Madison, Alabama, and is currently serving as the superintendent A8 programs division. Ladies and gentlemen, senior master sergeant Teresa Lipchesky. Leaders, please smile for the camera in three, two, one, smile. Thank you. Representing the Air Reserve Personnel Center, Senior Master Sergeant Tony Peel. 
Senior Master Sergeant Tony Peel is a first sergeant assigned to Buckley Air Force Base, Colorado. A combat proven first sergeant, Senior Master Sergeant Peel expertly served 500 airmen across three geographically separated units. His passion for leadership development is evident in his dedication to mentoring nine first sergeants and 12 additional duty shirts on Buckley Air Force Base. A trained maintainer at heart, Senior Master Sergeant Peel hails from Pelham, Georgia and continues to serve as the Air Reserve Personnel Center's first sergeant. Ladies and gentlemen, Senior Master Sergeant Tony Peel. Leaders, please smile for the camera in three, two, one, smile. Thank you. From Headquarters Air Force Reserve Command, Senior Master Sergeant DeBlair Tate. Senior Master Sergeant DeBlair Tate is a First Sergeant Academy instructor assigned to the Ira C. Eaker Center for Leadership Development, Montgomery Air Force Base, Gunter Annex, Alabama. Senior Master Sergeant Tate helped rewrite the First Sergeant course, ensuring curriculum alignment with the SECAF and CSEF priorities while integrating Air Force Reserve specific lessons for yellow ribbon and employee assistance for the Guard and Reserve. Senior Master Sergeant Tate hails from Atlanta, Georgia, and continues to serve as a First Sergeant Academy instructor. Ladies and gentlemen, Senior Master Sergeant DeBlair Tate. Leaders, please smile for the camera in three, two, one, smile. Thank you. And the winner in the First Sergeant of the Year category from 4th Air Force, assigned to the 35th Aeroport Squadron, Joint Base mcguire dix Lakehurst, New Jersey, Senior Master Sergeant Rebecca Spedaleri. Hi, Steve, congrats. Senior Master Sergeant Spedaleri executed outstanding leadership directly supporting Operation Freedom Sentinel and NATO Resolute Support as the first Sergeant 455th Expeditionary Medical Group at Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan. Sergeant Spedaleri cared for over 200 medics who aided 10 forward operating bases, treated 10,500 patients, and responded to 364 traumas with a 99.2% save rate. Additionally, Sergeant Spedaleri influenced 72,900 personnel nationwide, where she led a monthly resiliency program to fight suicide, correlating with the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force Tactical Pause Initiative. Finally, Sergeant Spedaleri campaigned to Air Force Central Command and Air Force Reserve Command leadership to resolve reintegration concerns for 7,000 airmen exposed to combat environments, needing comprehen comprehensive airmen fitness resources. Her efforts corrected a lodging shortfall which afforded commanders to utilize the Deployment Transition Center for their airmen. Senior Master Sergeant Spedaleri hails from Jackson, New Jersey, and proudly serves the citizen airmen of the 35th Aerial Port Squadron at Joint Base mcguire dix Lakehurst, New Jersey, as their first sergeant. Ladies and gentlemen, Senior Master Sergeant Rebecca Spedaleri. <laughs> Leaders, please smile for the camera in three, two, one, smile. Thank you. Finally, we would like to recognize the First Sergeant Council of the Year nominee and winner. First Sergeants serve as a commander's advisor and critical link to topics concerning the health, esprit de corps, discipline, mentoring, and well being of all assigned airmen and their families. Representing Fourth Air Force, the 452nd Air Mobility Wing First Sergeant Council from March Air Reserve Base, California. The 452nd Air Mobility Wing First Sergeant Council serves the Air Force Reserve's largest wing. This council supported worldwide airlift, air refueling operations, and the daily operations of active duty, National Guard, and Reserve tenants from the Air Force, Army, Navy, and Marine Corps, as well as the Department of Homeland Security. Our first sergeants provided support for over 600 deployed airmen, 2,950 hours of airlift support, and the processing of 56,000 Marines and soldiers whose actions provided support for operations Freedom Sentinel, Inherent Resolve, Spartan Shield, and Juniper Micron. 
The 452nd Air Mobility Wing First Sergeant Council directly contributed to the readiness of all assigned members through two base-wide exercises, a series of mobilization exercises supporting over 1,200 taskings, validating the wing's ability and mission-first attitude. Ladies and gentlemen, the 452nd Air Mobility Wing First Sergeant Council. Leaders, please smile for the camera in three, two, one, smile. Thank you. And the winner of the first Sergeant Council of the Year hails from Youngstown Air Reserve Station, Ohio. Please join us in congratulating the 910th Airlift Wing. The 910th Airlift Wing is comprised of 11 diamond wearing first sergeants and two additional duty first sergeants, a dedicated team devoting to taking care, devoted to taking care of our citizen airmen and their military families. They focused on cultivating trust and building resiliency through monthly wellness checks with family members of deployed airmen, authored and distributed an information postcard to ensure, ensure families are aware of and connected with available resources and ensured yellow ribbon events were fully staffed by filling instructor shortfalls, enabling the presentation of the complete curriculum to 152 airmen and 267 guests. The 910th Airlift Wing First Sergeant's Council coordinated efforts to present two PACE courses, serving the development of 87 supervisors with unique leadership insight. Their efforts enhanced community relations through participation in speeches of panels, cultivating a spirit of service and esprit de corps. This close-knit cadre of first sergeants exceptionally represents our Air Force core values and the United States Air Force Reserve. Many of the members of this award-winning council have transitioned to another position. To properly recognize their accomplishment, please take a moment to look at this photo of the team. Ladies and gentlemen, the 910th Airlift Wing First Sergeant Council of the Year. Woo! Woo yeah! yeah! Leaders, please smile for the camera in three, two, one. Smile. Thank you. If we can now have all of our honorees, please turn on your camera for one final group photo. Let's hear it for our 2020 Airman of the Year. Okay, leaders. Last time, please smile for the camera. In three, two, one. Smile. Thank you. Lieutenant General Scobie, before we wrap up, sir, do you or Chief White have any closing comments? My only closing comments today is I, I, I can see why I was never a, an outstanding airman of the year. I could not compete with the kind of talent that we have in our organization. Uh, again, I want to say uh, congratulations to all of you who've worked so hard to be in, incredible members of the Air Force Reserve Command. Uh, thank you for everything that you do. I uh, can't tell you how much Janice and I appreciate it every day. I can tell you this, and it, it's from our entire command team. Uh, the reason why we take these jobs and do these things is because we get to work with people like you every day. It makes it all worthwhile. Thank you for everything you do. And I will give the last word to the command chief. Tim, over to you. Thanks, boss. Team, we're extremely proud of you. Uh, believe it or not, uh, working with uh, General Scobie actually happens to be the second best part of my job. The first being is getting to know and serve along some outstanding airmen such as yourselves. We are extremely proud of all the hard work that you, that you did. You got us through uh, 2020. You're going to get us through 2021 because of your leadership and, and your service and commitment to this country. So we appreciate you. We thank you. And it is our pleasure being able to serve with you and to be your command team. Thanks, team. 
Thank you, General and Mrs. Scobie and Chief Master Sergeant and Mrs. White. Thank you also to all our senior leaders, honorees, family members, guests, and friends who spent time with us this afternoon. As you all know, events like these require a dedicated team of professionals who make the magic happen. Thank you to Lieutenant Colonel Fernando Waldron, Major Shane Malkin, Mr. Dan Pensiero, Captain Shannon Antone, Senior Master Sergeant Corey Conaway, and Senior Master Sergeant Virginia Wynn, without whom we would not be celebrating here today. As our program comes to a close, again, we are grateful for the overwhelming support which has enabled us to honor these very talented airmen. By every measure, they have excelled beyond expectation. However you choose to spend the rest of your afternoon, we hope it finds you and your loved ones in good health and high spirits. Thank you again for joining us. Air Force Reserve Command, out. You guys were awesome. Congratulations, everyone.